Hi everyone, my name is Luke Baghetti. I am a software engineer and I ran into an interesting tweet today and it was by a Shrey Batra and he said, took an interview for a senior engineer position and the candidate didn't even know bubble sort. Did I expect too much? And I think this tweet might have been a bit of a joke because he kind of goes into that a little bit in the comments, but a lot of people responded and you know, I kind of realized that I've literally never done a bubble sort in my life. If someone had asked me uh, on the street, what is bubble sort? I would not have been able to tell them. I would have assumed it was a sorting algorithm. Or algorithm. I've heard it before, I've heard of it before, but I've never actually looked at it and I figured I'd go ahead and try, um, you know, cracking open Google and implementing it and see what happens. So let's go ahead and get started. So for this project, I'm going to be using Dart, and um, Dart's just my language of choice. You could do it in anything, and I actually considered using Dartpad. Um, probably should have used Dartpad, but you know I'm just used to my IDE, and it's easy enough for me to spin up a project and to try it out. And what a lot of people like to say to me is that. You know, my ID is too bright. What I'll tell you is that all my apps are set up to match system mode. So if my system's in light mode, then my ID is also in light mode. And I'm using the Atom 1 Dark and Atom 1 Light themes for that. So here I am just looking at bubble sort. Um, you know, to the best of my knowledge, I've never done this before. And we're just kind of looking over it and trying to figure out exactly what the algorithm is. And unfortunately for us, the little GIF that animates the bubble sort is really slow. So at this point, I'm understanding that we have a two element window that's iterating over a list. And that window is making comparison between the A element and the B element, um, and then swapping them when one is greater than the other. Um, in this case, it's when B is greater than A, it swaps B and A, otherwise it just goes to the end. And I'm going ahead and just kind of trying to figure out how I want to code this. And to be perfectly honest, at this point, I don't fully understand um, that this is being done in multiple passes. You know, I figured let's, let's start with the thing that we know how to do, and that's to make a random list, which is actually a little bit harder than you would expect um because i wanted to have one through nine all represented in there and it's really easy to to write um the same twice and miss one so i'm going through and, and doing my best to get one through nine in there in a random order so process done now we can go home. um so at this point i i believe i'm looking at this and i'm thinking to myself there's no way you can do this in one pass. How could you possibly sort this in one pass? It's impossible. Um, but we decided to start writing code in that direction as if we're going to do one pass. There's definitely an element of faith in writing that first for loop. Because intuitively I'm thinking to myself, there's no way you can do this in one pass. And I have a habit of printing out the index whenever I crack a new for loop like this because I always forget um, whether it's less than list length or less than equal to list length. And it's always so easy for me to just print it out and see, see what it does. So at this point, I'm realizing that because we are doing this two element window, I have to not go to the very end because if I do, then you know, A will be my last element and then B will be an element that doesn't exist and it will get wicked crashy on me. So we've reduced how far we're going and then we're pulling that window all the way to the end. So I'm just checking that it printed out all the windows and it has.
And I believe we're looking at this and thinking to ourselves, there's no way you can do this in one iteration. How could you possibly do this in one iteration? It's impossible. Um, and what I didn't realize is that I hadn't spent enough time watching the really slow bubble sort GIF, which is, by the way, a really great way to, to show how these things work. And so I'm realizing, okay, we can't do this in one iteration. We have to do this in multiple iterations. So let's use, let's do this recursively. Um, and you could totally solve this problem recursively. There's no doubt about it. Um, but I end up going back and looking at the bubble sort documentation, Wikipedia page, and realizing that, you know, this is going to be the way I was imagining it recursively. It was going to go all the way through, sort all the way through, and then sort all the way through again and again and again and again until it did not, um, you know, have anything to sort. And actually, when you see my final solution, you'll realize um, that it's not fully optimized. Uh, exiting when there's nothing to sort on the first iteration, I forgot to do that in my final solution, and you'll see that when we get there. So these kinds of like algorithmic brain teasers, I think are really interesting because they do give you kind of elemental building blocks into software and it, and it gives you an opportunity to really think about things like time complexity. Um, and, but I don't do them on my day to day. Like I never implement bu bubble sorts. Um, I never really implement sorting algorithms because the tools that we have available to us um, have these things built in. Like I'm pretty sure, and I'd have to double check, but I'm pretty sure that the Dart and JavaScript dot sort method is using this method, the bubble sort. So typically we would just put in a list and then call dot sort, compare A to B, and then get on with their lives. And it would automatically do the two element window and move through. So at this point, I'm just sitting here and watching this thing go through an entire cycle. And by cycle, I mean solving, goes through an entire solve. And I'm realizing that we need to have nested for loops. And I'm also realizing that each time it goes through, um, it goes a little bit less distance each time. And that's because there's no point in sorting something that's already been sorted. And actually I'm thinking back to my earlier comment now and I'm realizing that maybe it's not possible to exit early. If anyone knows if it's possible to exit a bubble sort early, uh, let me know in the comments. Because my solution did not have an early exit. Um, and I don't know if one exists. If I was just looking at it and thinking to myself, you know, there's probably some way to do an early exit. And I figured it would be if the first, if the first um, window had no comparison, but clearly that's not the case because if you're, you know, if A was, if A was less than B in the first um, window, then it would exit early and you wouldn't have a, you wouldn't necessarily have a solution. <clears throat> and at this point I've actually created a stack overflow because what I'm trying to do here is instead of doing an index from zero to eight, for example, I'm doing, I'm, I want to go, I want to count down instead of count up. So I want to start at eight and go down to zero. And the reason I want to do this is for me, it's easier to think about what's my maximum index that I can traverse to. And so I've gone ahead and fixed that. Now we're counting down instead of counting up with stack overflow and we're getting the range that we need, except we're missing the first index. And there you go. So we're thinking about changing the name, the name to max index, but I end up not doing that because um, it just makes that for loop declaration uh, really messy. So we just kind of reassign it here because then it's easier for me to think about.
So we've got our initial for loop and that one goes, okay, we're going to, in our first iteration, we're gonna sort all the way to the last index. And then in the next iteration, we're going all the way to the end, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, minus six, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> and so now each time we do that pass, it's giving us the maximum index that we have, that we can go to. And so now in our nested for loop and our second um, level, we're going to go ahead and, you know, go from the beginning to the maximum index. So the first for loop specifies what your maximum index is and it reduces it each time. And the second for loop just iterates through to that maximum index. And here I'm just printing out to make sure that we're, we're getting all the appropriate, we're hitting all the appropriate indices. Okay, so at this point, what I'm doing is I've is I've crafted my second for loop and it goes um, all the way to the end, but not not all the way to the end. It goes to the end minus one. And the reason for that is because I'm going to do a two element window and A is going to be from the beginning to the end minus one. And then B is going to go fill in that last bit. Because if I went all the way through, then what would happen is that second element would um, go off the edge of the list. There's probably a better way of saying that. We'll go off the edge of the list and um, cause errors because that element will not exist. So now I'm happy with the iteration and I'm happy with the fact that I'm getting the correct A and B values. And I basically know at this point, you know, if A is greater than B, then we need to swap their positions. And what we're going to do here is we're going to pull out the A index and B index just because it'll be easier mentally for me to refer to them. And at this point, I'm trying to see if there's any good methods I can use to swap two items or, um, you know, maybe, I don't know, pull something out, put something in. And I realized pretty quickly that the best thing for me to do is to just swap the values uh, using uh, just index access using uh, square brackets and Dart. So we're just going to say B index is equal to A and A index is equal to B. And that's how we're going to swap it. And at this point, I'm feeling pretty confident that it's going to work out. So we just print it out. And that's a bubble sort. So all I really want to say at this point is, you know, every, every, everyone does interviews differently. You know, personally, because maybe because of my background, I tend to look for people who are good at solving problems, not people who necessarily have memorized algorithms or memorized like what these things are. And so, you know, if somebody has said to me in an interview, like do a bubble sort, and you can't use any, you can't use any documentation, or you can't use Google or any of these things to to know what it is. And I, I would have just flat out failed the interview. Um, but I was able to pull down documentation and and make a pretty honest try of it, and it looks like I was able to resolve that. So is this something that I should be able to do in an interview? I don't think so. You know, I don't expect people to be able to do these things in interviews, but. Clearly everyone has uh, different reasons for how they do interviews in different contexts. Um, you know, the people that I'm interviewing for are for front end positions, mobile engineering specifically. Um, and this is this just the sort of thing that you typically don't do. And if you run into a situation where you need to do something like this, 
then you take 10 minutes and you figure it out and you document it and then you move on with your life. So.